Immersed Robot. Hello, welcome to Immersed Robot. So I just wanted to take a quick look at the full featured Pimax Play software now, which is opening up to everybody around this time, I believe it should be going out to most people now who own the Pimax Crystal. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to take a very quick look, a quick tour of the software available to users so that they can get all the features of the Pimax Crystal. I won't be covering the all-in-one aspect, the standalone aspect to the Pimax Crystal. I've not really tested that too much just yet unfortunately but I'll probably make a video on that at some point in the future. So this is the Pimax Play software that you'll get anyway when you install it for your Pimax Crystal and if we go into the device settings and there we've got a few options straight away so you should see this now with the latest software and you can switch between the inside out tracking at the top here and the lighthouse base tracking if you have the steam vr faceplate the lighthouse faceplate for the crystal of course and you need base stations as well to go with that if you want to switch over to the lighthouse base tracking you also need some compatible motion controllers if you want to use motion controllers in the game of your choice as well so that's that's how you switch between there. Very easy, honestly, the Lighthouse faceplate. I have covered it previously on this channel. You just snap the faceplate on, then switch it over, and it should pick it up straight away. Then below that, you can switch between the 90 hertz and 120 hertz display refresh rate. Now, this, I'm still having problems. I've reached out to Pimax a few times regarding this. So I can switch over to 120 hertz, no problem at all. And it connects. And if I go into Steam VR, I can see that it's registering as 120 hertz. Even if you have the GPU frame timing graph in Steam VR, it will show 120 hertz, no problems at all. But when I open up FPS VR, it's not showing 120, it shows 113. Even though my frame timings are just in the Steam VR menu, are around sort of one to two milliseconds they're hardly anything on both the cpu and gpu side so there's something else going on with this which i'm trying to get resolved i'm not sure if others are having this problem because i've seen videos of people claiming that you know there's no issue at all with the 120 hertz so it's just something to point out i'm playing most stuff at 90 frames per second anyway based on the power of my pc i'm running a rtx 3080 of course so most stuff i'm pretty happy just to get 90 frames per second anyway but the other confusing aspect is when i go into something like 11 table tennis for example using that 120 hertz setting it's not registering it's, it's registering around 113 115 in the steam vr menu then when i go into 11 table tennis it will register 90 in red and it won't go above 90 again gpu cpu frame times in fps vr are showing well well under what i should be able to get native 120 but for some reason it's just locking out at 90 i don't know what is going on with that so that's just something that's affecting me I, I again i don't know if it's it's affecting everybody or not then below that we've got this backlight setting so of course you can increase or decrease that there is a local dimming setting as well which i'll get to in a bit um you can turn eye tracking on from here as well with the auto rpd adjustment that's working fantastically well for me it just as soon as you put the headset on when you've not worn it for a couple of seconds then it will automatically adjust the ipd you can hear the motor whirring and you'll get a display come up as well you've got a wearing location reminder as well so it will make you it will detect where your eye position is and ask you to either raise or lower the headset on your face in order to get it absolutely locked in i find that a little bit annoying so i don't actually have that turned on at this moment in time anyway i might i might try that again at some point in the future below that you've got some kind of ipd adjustment override as well where you can manually adjust that there's a few settings within that as well but i've not really explored that too much myself then going into the next section down here if we go into games We've got the render quality here. Now, this will depend again on the system that you're using. So I've got it on balance mode, which I believe gives 0 0.75. If you're running a 4090 or something like that, then you can increase that. You can customize it here. So the balance mode 0 0.75. If you go onto the maximum, it will be 1.0. But again, you can just change the render quality here, depending on the power of your PC. So here, if you have the eye tracking enabled, you'll get this option for dynamic foveated rendering if the eye tracking isn't enabled then it will become fixed foveated rendering but with dynamic foveated rendering you can have it on minimum balanced or maximum and that's just how aggressive it will be in reducing the resolution 
around the, uh, the the peripheral view of wherever you're looking. I have it on maximum in order to get the maximum benefit in this. This setting runs on a driver level, so it will be actually be applied to every single game that you start. Unfortunately, the games are not necessarily all compatible with it. Now, there is a spreadsheet that has been started to be worked on actually, which will give you some more information on which games are compatible with the Dynamic Foveator rendering. And this is that spreadsheet here. I'll put a link to this in the description to this video. So you've got games here which are working natively with the integrated Dynamic Foveator rendering. And then if you also download OpenXR Toolkit and then the Pimax runtime, the Pimax XR runtime, tick this checkbox here. So always use the eye tracker. Um, then you can also use it with the OpenXR titles, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example, will work with that method. And then, you know, this spreadsheet's also got games which are not working or bugged out as well. So this spreadsheet is being worked on all the time. Once again, I'll put a link in the description to this for a bit more information on what you can expect from the Dynamic Foveator rendering in the Pimax Crystal. There's also actually down here, some people have put the, um, the amount of benefit you can expect as well, depending on the graphics card that you're using. Generally, when I've been testing Dynamic Foveator rendering um, in things like Elite, dangerous it does vary quite a bit anywhere between sort of 10 percent all the way up to sometimes 30 percent improvement in frame rate once again depending on the the gaming experience that you're trying but yeah it's one of the best features of the pimax crystal the dynamic foveator rendering so i recommend looking into that and uh, in order to get the maximum benefit of frame rate on this headset below that we've got the smart smoothing function yeah i don't the, this, this is sort of the, the reprojection method basically, so it will smooth out frame, dropped frames if you're running in half frame rate and stuff like that. It varies depending on the game that you're using. I've had sort of mixed results with this when I've tested this to be honest. So yeah, a little bit of experimentation. Most headsets have some sort of reprojection, um, the sort of motion smoothing, smart smoothing, however you want to call it, motion reprojection. All of these things are available on different headsets. So it's handy to have anyway. So that's how you can either activate it or deactivate it in this software. Then below that, you've got this hidden area mask section. And depending on how different games are rendered with the bell distortion correction within the Pimax crystal sometimes there can be pixels that are actually outside your view and wasted really if they're being rendered so you can select this and it will have varying results sometimes you'll still get a depending on the game that you're playing you'll still get sort of a cutoff that is visible in others you can probably use it again this is something I've not really dived into too much so I don't know how much benefit it can have on performance if you use that or the downsides if you do use it and it's not really compatible with the game that you're playing so this something to consider anyway something you can experiment with and then you've got a section here where you can uh, it's got a checkbox for compatible with Vive only game um, I don't know what that's all about <laughs> I've never had a problem with that so I've never really uh, used that setting either and then going down to the general settings you can update your headset firmware here then you've got this uh, section where you can when you put the headset on you can either have nothing display at all or you can go into Pimax home which is just the like the planet surface the standard generic planet surface that you'll find in a lot of Pimax headsets or you've got experience home which opens up a menu like a steam VR menu when you put the headset on and gives you plenty of options to launch games in different ways using different settings and stuff like that so that's something to experiment with once again the uh, experience home a few little other settings here you know self-explanatory a lot of these things are and then if we go into the advanced settings now this is actually with the latest firmware um, I had these lens settings so you've got different lenses as we know in the Pimax crystal so originally I believe they were shipped out with plastic lenses I've got the glass lenses and I think they're all being shipped out with the glass lenses now and then we've got this 42 ppd lens which I've not heard anything about for a long time I don't know if that's still happening or not so that will give you a sort of higher pixel density at a reduced field of view I believe so we'll wait to hear more on that but they're also I think they're also working on some lenses which will increase field of view and reduce the pixel density down below that 35 ppd as well so these um i had a few problems with the latest firmware where it was on an automatic setting and it just you know it wasn't working correctly i don't know what it had moved it over even though it, it had detected glass lenses it still wasn't rendering cor correctly it was rendering at the incorrect resolution in steam vr and i was getting all sorts of problems so i reached out to pimax they told me to manually select the glass lenses and that did resolve all my problems so that's 
that's something just to keep an eye on as well. You've then got this horizontal IPD offset, so you've got plenty of controls with regards to IPD. It's obviously got the hardware IPD in the headset itself, and then you can manually adjust the IPD offset if things still don't feel quite right for you. But yeah, I've not had any need to use that either. Then screen vertical offset value once again. And then below that, we've got the local dimming level. So I've got this on extreme. Some people who really are not happy with the uh, sort of the standard presets here have actually gone into a .json file a configuration file within the Pimax directory there's um I'll try to put a link to a video which will explain how to do that as well so I, I tried it briefly I'm happy with the extreme setting anyway for local dimming but you just change the local dimming manually within that configuration file down to 0 0.01 and it's supposed to help with overall color balance and reduce blooming as well which can get if you've got sort of bright text on the, a very dark black background you will still get a little bit of blooming around that text sometimes i've not had a huge issue with that myself though um but yeah that's pretty much it really so that's all the features in the software once again the pimax you can switch it over to the all-in-one mode the standalone mode i've tried it briefly gone into the home area a few little issues with that myself but um i think they're still working on that aspect of it and i've not really got any games or anything to try on that at the moment either so i'll hold fire on a video regarding that but it probably will be something that i'll get to at some point in the future i really regard the Pimax crystal as a pc vr headset primarily and that's really where i want to use it i don't really want to use it as a standalone headset anyway so yeah i'm not too sure how much i'll, I'll dive into that but uh, i'll report back at some point in the future but that's pretty much it for this video really i just wanted to go through a few of these settings just to show what you can expect and setting up i think dynamic foveated rendering with the eye tracking is the big one i think that's the big thing that most people would be interested in and it also offers a great benefit for in frame rate and performance on certain games so yeah i think that's the uh that's the one that you should look out look out for but anyway thanks very much for watching this one and i'll see you next time